Hello, welcome. In this video, we're going to be introducing some of the amazing things that go into 3D matrix transformations. I hope you enjoy it. It really is just so cool. Now, as a quick reminder, we have these three axes. We'll keep X as the red axis and Y as the green and Z as the blue. I'll also keep Z as the vertical axis, but you could change that orientation. Um, regardless of the orientation, our points, for example, will be written in the x, y, z order, where x is always first, then y, and then z. Now in two dimensions, we dealt a lot with 2 by 2 matrices, so it might not surprise you that we'll often be dealing with 3 by 3 matrices. Now this matrix, I show it first because it's really important, is the, still the identity matrix. And what's nice about the identity matrix, if we have zeros everywhere else, it helps us remember that this number will directly be related to whatever x we're looking at, this will be directly related to whatever y, and this whatever z value we're looking at. And if we're going to multiply the identity matrix by a point x, y, z, we still will get x, y, and z, but it's important that if you have zeros in the other positions, that you associate these numbers with x and y and z. It's a really good starting place. Now, of course, you don't need to have zeros in the matrix. There could really be any numbers. You'll be finding that in most of your transformation matrices, at least as we get started, you'll see zeros and ones and negative ones, but there could be any number at any position, in which case this whole row, A, B, and C, would impact X at a point. This would impact Y, and this would impact Z. We're going to take our transformation matrices, we'll always put them first, and then multiply them by some object, and then see the transformed object. That's the order that we'll be doing it. And sometimes you might be inclined to, to commute this around. Just be aware that we'll change some of the matrix definitions we have because matrix multiplication is not commutative. Now, when you're doing this, don't forget, if, if you're stuck in 3D, bring it down a dimension. Bringing it down a dimension can really simplify things. Don't forget that 2D has a lot to offer. If you're trying to move something around in 3D, like something complicated, like a line or a shape, okay, step back and simplify it. Try to move a point through a transformation first, and then build up lines and other objects as well. Don't be afraid to generalize or try to generalize from algebraic thinking and simple patterns. So like if you know something about 2D, look at the pattern and try to bring it up to 3D. Constantly you want to be drawing or using some kind of software to reference what should happen. And in our case, we're focusing on reflections through a plane, rotations around a line, and reflection through a point. These are our main types of transformations. Okay, so let's get started. Let's let's figure this out. So first of all, I want to reflect a, a point in 3D through a plane, a two-dimensional object. What could happen? Well, first of all, let's go to our two-dimensional analogy here. Let's reflect a point over a line. So instead of a point through a plane, let's go over a line, then we'll build up to the plane. So if you have a point like 2, 1, and you reflect it over the line y, the y-axis here, right? you get this point negative 2, 1. And algebraically, that means x, y becomes negative x, y. And what we want to think about is, well, where is the z-axis here? Maybe the z-axis is right at the origin, coming straight out towards you. So this could be a three-dimensional space, except uh, we're looking at it from a two-dimensional perspective. And that means that there's all kinds of extensions we can we can take from this simple example into 3D. In this example, notice that when reflecting over the line y, the y-axis, that y values do not change. So it seems that in two dimensions, the thing we're, the line we're reflecting over um, is also corresponds to the variable that doesn't change at all, whereas x does. Does that extend into 3D? It does. When you're reflecting across a plane, let's say a yz plane, the y and z values, just like the y value of the point in two dimensions, the y and z values will not change. They're invariant. Instead, it's the x value that changes. And here's the matrix that matches that idea. When we multiply this matrix by a point, the x value will change and the y and z value are invariant. It looks something like this. Let's say we have a point three, four, five. It's some distance from this plane right here. And again, 3, 4, 5 just means you go over 3 on the x, over 4 on the y, and then up 5 on the z. Reflect it across the yz plane, and you get this point b. And notice that negative 3 here is the only number that has changed. That's because this point a is a distance of 3 from the plane, 
and you reflect across it three in the other direction. Now it doesn't look like three right here. It looks like it's further away from the plane in fact, but it's not. It's the same exact distance. And if we plug in the point three, four, five into this multiplication, we will get its image right here. But maybe you're not convinced of that. So let's, let's make sure you have a way of convincing yourself. So here's the 3D calculator on GeoGebra. And I just wanted to show you how quick you can analyze this. So if you click on the gear, I'm gonna clean it up a little bit. I like a, a grid. And I also like to turn off that gray plane. So there's my X and my Y and my Z. So I'm gonna type in a point, A equals three, four, five. And I want the plane, the Y, Z plane. To get the Y, Z plane, it's as simple as typing in X equals zero. Because if you think about the Y, Z plane, what do you know about every point on that plane? Well, wherever you on the, are on that plane, the value of the point of, of x at least is zero, right? So on that plane, x is zero. So you just type in x equals zero and you get every point where x is zero, that's the idea. Um, you can reverse it to other planes, like if you want the x, z plane, just type in y equals zero and so on and so forth. All right, so the idea is that we want to see the matrix take this point to the other side of the plane. So let's type that in. The matrix underscore over, let's see, the YZ plane equals, okay. If we're going over the YZ plane, that means X is changing. So I'm going to type in negative one, zero, zero. That's my first row. So X is changing. But the other rows, Y is not changing. So it's zero, one, zero. And then finally, zero, zero, one, because Z is not changing. That's our matrix, and if you mess it up, you can click on this and change what you want. Okay, now we wanna take this matrix and use it to transform this point. Let's do that. Apply matrix, there it is. What's the matrix? My matrix is M sub Y, Z, and the object is A. There's the image. And you can see that is the exact distance from the xy plane. So you can take that 2D slice, see the y-axis coming straight out at you, and we're right back to a two-dimensional image, right? Here's the x-axis, three, five, and then in the other direction, negative three, five. It's the same idea, just extended in three dimensions. And you can model that in GeoGebra. All right, let's keep going. What about rotations um, around lines? Okay. So in 2D, let's go back to 2D. If you have 2, 1, and you rotate at 180, you get negative 2, negative 1. So that's a 180 rotation. And again, you can think of, let's say here's my x-axis, y-axis, maybe z-axis is coming straight out at us. So in two dimensions, all right. Well, we're rotating around a point first, then we're rotating around a line. So in two dimensions, you're rotating around a point, specifically in this case, the origin. What can we learn from that to figure out how we rotate around a line? So when we're rotating around the origin by 180 degrees, X's and Y's, they're both changing. They're both opposites, but Z is not. Now, there is no Z here officially, but I can imagine the Z-axis coming straight out at me. And I'm thinking, is it that simple? Is the axis that I'm rotating around the only thing that's not going to be changing in the point? That's exactly correct. If you rotate 180 degrees around the Z-axis, well, the axis we're rotating around that value is not going to change, just like when we're rotating across a plane, reflecting across a plane Y, Z, Y and Z don't change. When we're rotating around an axis, Z, the Z value doesn't change. But look at this, the X's and Y's do change to their opposites. And this is the matrix that corresponds to that rotation. Now I tried to set this up so you can see, here's the point A, I put the circle in there. It's at three, zero, five and it rotates 180 degrees over here to B. And you can see that the image of A is negative 305. It's 180 degrees around the Z axis. <clears throat> Excuse me. And it's rotating uh, counterclockwise, right? So it's going like this right here. And let's look at that in, I guess, real time. So I'll just reset this. Okay. so. Okay, again, like my grid, I don't like to see the plane. And um, you, you can really do any point. I thought it was really helpful to see a point that's on one of the axes. So, for example, I 
should I use? Oh, I'm going to use the same example here. 305, sorry. So um, let's say we have a point A equals 305. I wrote 35. So 30, 5. Okay. So I'm, the reason I chose a point that um, has a zero value for Y is because I can look at this from a 2D perspective like this, or I can look at it over here to really see what I want, All right? I want it to go on the other side, essentially. It's on the, it's over the x-axis here. I want it to rotate around here. So um, let's do that. The matrix, we want to rotate um, around the z-axis. And the idea, the thinking, is that if we're rotating around the z-axis, that's the only thing that won't change. So x will change. So x will be negative. The first row will be negative 1, 0, 0. My second row corresponds to y. That's going to change. So we get 0, comma, negative 1, comma, 0. And then z will not change, 0, 0, 1. This is our matrix that I think will rotate this point A by 180 degrees. Let's try it. Apply matrix. OK. Well, and we are taking this matrix right here, so M subscore Z, and the object is A, and there's the image. Now you can have it show you the value of the point by clicking on it. It's a little, there might be a faster way, I don't know what, name and value. Okay, do that again over here. Settings, name and value. All right. So I like, I like to see that they're both on this line right here. So I can see this definitely got 180 degrees. Okay, so finally, let's look at our last goal here. It's to reflect a point through a point. Now, in this case, I don't know a way to simplify this um, in, in a way that's easier than going through a point. A point is a zero-dimensional object. So I think the best way to maybe approach this is to simplify it just down to 2D and then go to 3D. And it's gonna be a point through a point in both scenarios. So a point reflected a point around the origin in 2D, and then we'll do the origin in 3D and see how they relate. Now, this is interesting because this is the same as the previous example. This was also a 180 degree rotation. But what we're about to see in two dimensions, a reflection through the origin and a rotation of 180 degrees are the same, but in three dimensions, they are not. So what can we infer from this? Well, I'm thinking that if you're reflecting through the origin, right? from the point A to A prime here. X's and Y's are both opposites. So I can imagine if there was a third dimension in this point and I'm reflecting through the origin, that might also be the opposite. So a reflection through a point, let's say specifically here the origin for the point X, Y, is just gonna be the opposite of X and the opposite of Y. And obviously that's a specific point to reflect through we can go to other points. It's always about finding the distance between the point you have and the point you're reflecting around. The distance in the x direction and y direction and then going in equal and opposite direction across that point. So in this case though it's the origin, so it's just whatever I go over two and then up one to get here. So to get to this point I go back two and down one. So in three dimensions I go over x, up y, and um, up z to get to some point. Well then I'm gonna go back back and down to wherever my new point is. And here's the matrix that corresponds to that motion. And you might accept that here if you have the point three, four, five, a reflection through the point zero, zero, zero gets you negative three, negative four, and negative five. But let me show you in case you're feeling skeptical. So refresh this. So again, we've got this 3D calculator. Here's my grid and my tick -line plane. All right, so I got a point, and I want the point three, four, five. There it is. And again, I, I want the, the number there so you can see it. All right, so what does that mean? Well, to get from the origin to this point here, I go over three on the x-axis, and then over four on the y, and then up five to the z. So to reflect through the point, I would do all those opposite motions. And the matrix, I'll have it go through O, to capital O looks cooler. Um, okay, so the idea is that everything is the opposite. So X is the opposite, so negative one, zero, zero, and then zero, negative one, zero, and then finally zero, zero, negative one. 
All right, so we want to apply the matrix. There we go. And the matrix is M underscore capital O, and the object is A. And I guess this is the, the, the image um, reflected through the origin, but I think if you play out the software, you might be convinced that it makes a lot of sense, right? So to get to this point, three, four, five, we have to go over three. To get down here, we have to go back a three. And then instead of going um, in a positive direction on the y-axis, I turn the other way, I go in a negative direction over here to get to eight, that's eight prime. And then instead of going up five, I go down five. Everything is the opposite. And like I said, we're, we're not gonna generalize to any point in the space, the 3D space, but if you put another point somewhere else, you could just count over on the X, Y, and Z axis. How do I get from that from where I am to that point that I'm reflecting through and then just do the opposite thing on the other side. So whatever the distance is between this point and the thing you're reflecting through, whether the X, Y, and, distance, and Z distances are, go in the opposite direction on the other side of the point you're reflecting through and you'll get where you need to go. Really cool stuff. Okay, so let's compare what we have so far. When we reflect through a plane, which is two dimensions, that means that two of our values will be invariant. So in this case, y and z values are not changing. We are reflecting across the yz plane. When we're rotating around a one-dimensional line, one of our elements is invariant. And a point has no dimension, so everything changes. There's nothing that's invariant. And if we count the number of things that are invariant, it is surprising that we can figure out some special properties of these transformations. So let's just step back and write that out. We have two dimensions that are invariant for two-dimensional thing that we're transforming around. One dimension's invariant here, and then nothing's um, invariant here. And invariant means, of course, that it's not changing, right? So that aspect of the shape is not changing. Well, what about the orientation of the shape? Is it, is it maybe backwards, like we're going through a mirror? Like when does is, when is the orientation remain the same? Well, if you look at the space that you're in, in this case, three dimensions, and then we subtract the dimensions of the thing we're transforming around, we could figure it out. Amazingly, if we do three, we're in three dimensions, minus two, which is the dimensions of the plane that we're transforming around, we get one. If that difference is odd, then our orientation will reverse. If the difference here is even, three dimensions minus the one dimensional line, we get two. We know that the orientation of our object will be preserved. And finally, here, three dimensions minus the zero dimensional point, that's odd, our orientation will reverse. Now this gets really interesting, um, and we can look at some examples here, but I'll just at least try to establish some of the, the basic aspects of this. So let's go here, let's turn off our plane, let's put a grid on. You can actually start to construct some interesting 3D shapes very quickly. Remember to always start with points. So for example, if I want to reflect across the YZ plane, okay, that's when X equals zero, and I want a cube. So I'm going to go, let's say, over three, let's say A will be at three along the X axis, and then two on the Y axis, and then, I don't know, four on the Z axis. And then another point for our cube, we only need two points. We can go over three again. Uh, let's go further away, let's go four. Yeah, let's do four. And then, is that correct? Yeah, I think that's okay. Four, sorry. And four, and four, four. All right. So we have the cube there. And let's set it up. Well, an easy way to do a cube under tools, if you don't see it right here, you can click more and scroll down, you'll find this tool. Just select two points to get your cube. And the order in which you select them will change the direction the cube goes in. And this is our cube. Now we want to reflect it across this plane. So we need a matrix for that plane. I'll just type it in as matrix YZ. And the matrix that trans reflects us through this plane, it'll change X. So the first row will be negative one, zero, zero. The second row will be zero, one, zero, because the, the Y is not changing. And then finally Z will go zero, zero, one. That's our matrix. And we want to apply the matrix to the two points that started our cube. So let's apply the matrix YZ to the point A. 
and then apply that matrix to point B. So matrix YZ to point B. Okay, now we go back to our tools and set up our cube again. All right. So notice here, you can see it's like the cube is looking through a mirror. Everything in terms of orientation is reversed. On one side of the mirror, A is closer and the other side, uh, and then, um, sorry, on one side of the mirror, A is the closest point, which is also the closest point over here. However, just like when you're looking in the mirror, from this is you, from your perspective, the point B is to the right of you. However, if you go to the other side of the mirror, from the image's perspective, point B is to its left, right? The orientation in that way has been reversed. And this will also happen, if we go back here, if in, if we reflect it through a point, that will also uh, reverse the orientation. And you can see that um, happen, but here, when you rotate around a line, that will not happen. So I encourage you to try different shapes in GeoGebra, and you'll see that happening. Speaking of different shapes, what, what about if we look at other things, like other than points? I showed you a cube just now. What about even just a line? What would that even mean to rotate a line 180 degrees about the y-axis? Let's go back to GeoGebra and find out. Refresh it. Okay, so if we want to know what's going to happen to a line, let's go back to our points. Always go back to the points. And I think in this case, I said 180 degrees around the y axis here so let's make a line and if you do it very quickly in GeoGebra if you type out a point let's go over two on the X and three on the Y and um, five on the Z take one point there and then pick another point let's have B B also let's say two two on the uh, let's do uh, yeah two on the X zero on the y and one on the z. Once you have two points, if you're not sure how to write the equation of a line, go to your tools and then you'll find the line tool. You can connect those two and you will see the equation right here. Now that's a little overwhelming when you see that. But let's just explain what this means. It's saying you have some point two, three, five. You can see that's the point A. And then we're moving from that point. So this is a parametric equation. We're using the symbol lambda but from two on the x to get to the x value of b, we're not moving at all on the x, right? For some amount of change in lambda. And to go from three to zero, what are we doing? Think parametrically, we're going from three to zero, it's minus three, right? So three, we're losing three for every lambda. And then we're going five to one, so five to one is a difference of, of losing four for every lambda. So this is a parametric equation. So if you didn't use the line tool and you want to write an equation between these two points, just use your parametrics. Say two plus zero t, starting from the point A, three minus three t, the y, and then five minus four t, that will do it. And there's your equation. GeoGebra just writes that parametric in a different way. So there's, there's our um, line, and we want to rotate it around the y-axis using a matrix. So uh, let's make a matrix. Uh, if we're rotating around the y-axis, we know with points that y is invariant. So let's just set up a matrix where y is the invariant value and x is changing. So negative one, zero, zero. And then we have zero, one, zero for y. And then zero, zero, negative one for z is our matrix. So we'll apply that matrix to the line, but maybe the easiest way to do that is just apply to the individual points. So that matrix applied to the point A, there's our result, and then apply that matrix to the point B. Okay, so let's think about what's happening here. To get from this A to this B, we don't move at all on the X, so that should still be true here. And we went down three on the Y and down four on the Z axis. So maybe the equation for this line is to do the opposite. Well, we can't do the opposite of zero, so it's just, let's say, two plus zero t again. And, oh, but wait, we're not starting at two, are we? Well, 
the point A has been rotated, so X is now at negative 2, right? So it's been positive, it's now negative. And then instead of on the Y axis, even though it hasn't changed, instead of moving down 3, maybe we're moving up 3 on the Y axis. Let's see what happens. So, or maybe it's still the same, right? Because Y is invariant. What do we want to do? Let's just, let's keep it the same. Let's see how it works, right? Because Y is invariant. And then five is going down to one here in the original line, but that's that's changing, it's being rotated. So instead of five minus four, I think we can write five plus four t. And we're almost there. You can see that our line is almost in the right spot. So the only thing that we missed, or that I missed, <laughs> is that z doesn't start at positive five, it's been rotated, it starts at negative five. And there it goes, right? It goes right through those points. So what what's happening here? Well, when we rotate this line around the y-axis, pick two points on that line to understand what's going on, apply the matrix transformation to those two points, and that helps you figure out what's going on with the rotated line over here. And essentially, again, A went from 2, 3, 5 to negative 2, 3, negative 5. That's how that point changed. And then the direction that we move parametrically from that point um, x, if it wasn't 0, let's make it something not 0, let's have it go up from 2 to 3. That'll be, I think, more instructive. Instead of going up from 2 to 3, it should now go down. Right? Oops. Let me just do this. Oh, it's mad at me. Okay, there we go. So instead of going from 2 up to 3 by 1, we go down 1, right? So over here, the equation for this line will be a plus 1. And then this, um, 3 goes up from A. We go from 3 to down to 0. That's still going to be true here. We have 3 minus 3. And then instead of starting at 5, we start at negative 5. And instead of moving down 4, we move up 4. And that is exactly what's going on. Now to kind of sum summarize that, we start with the points, understand our lines, and we take our matrix right here that um, will change the x and z values, so we rotate around the y-axis by 180 degrees, and then we multiply this transformation matrix by the parametric equations we have. I think I changed it in the original example here. Suppose you have this line, you start at the point 3, 4, 5, and you're moving up to on the x, up 3 in the y, up 4 in the z. Um, when you multiply by this matrix, look what happens. This original point, let's say 3, 4, 5, becomes negative 3, 4, 5, and the way we move in the x and z direction should be opposite. That should be a minus 4t. Sorry about that. That should be a negative. But there's more. What, are you, what about if you want to rotate some other amount that's not 90 or 180 degrees or something like that? Well, in two dimensions, we can start there. We had this matrix. What about in three dimensions? Because in three dimensions, you're not just rotating around the origin, as we do in many two-dimensional examples. You could rotate around any of the axes, x, y, or z. Well, let's put this all together in our grand finale here. This is really cool. Let's say you want to rotate some angle around the x-axis. Let's think about that for a second. If you're rotating around the x-axis, it's the x part of the matrix that's invariant, and the y and the z are changing. So try to imagine a matrix, right, where the x value is not changing, but y's and z's are. So we take our two-dimensional matrix and put that in place of this part of our matrix right here, and we've got it. And this setup of this matrix will rotate your point or line some angle around the x-axis. Isn't that so cool? Now for y, for reasons I'm not going to prove right now, um, notice the sine and cosine are the opposite, right? But look at the position here. It might at first be confusing, but it's the y-axis rotating around, so y is invariant, and the zeros around that one, when you multiply it, will make sure that um, y does not change. Just like this one and this row and column of zeros, make sure you're not messing around with the x value at all. And finally, if you want to take by some angle omega on the z-axis, well now z is invariant, and there's that original two-dimensional rotation matrix here. 
So you can actually you rotate around multiple axes and the order matters, and but it does tie back to what we're doing in two dimensions. Okay, so let's just finish up with a quick example so you can see how this works. I wanna rotate this point by this many degrees on the y-axis. We have our matrix, right? Plug in the 60, we're gonna multiply it by this point. And I guess that, you know, once you have the matrix, that's simple enough, but I wanna show you that um, look, thinking about the structure of this multiplication will help you not have to memorize. So this row by this column right here, if we're rotating around the y-axis, we know that y needs to not be changed. So this zero right here, we multiply by that four, and there's no impact on this four on the position of your new point. And then when you multiply the second row by this, the one times the four, again, that four will remain a four. And then finally, this last row by this column right here, again, this zero in the middle will not change the four. So even though the signs kind of alternate, they, they alternate sign here, that's a little confusing, the location of the zero is always set up so that the thing that's invariant will never be changed. Um, and when it is, um, it's either ones or zeros, right? So when it is actually multiplied by something that's not zero, by this one, it's the exact same. And we get to this point over here. All right, well, thank you so much for listening. I hope you enjoyed this. And this is really just the start. There's so much more cool stuff. I wanted to just give you an intro. Thanks.